despite coming out of a once in a century pandemic, life expectancy has not recovered. Uh, mental health crises, violence, chronic disease and overdose crises have caused life expectancy to fall further, uh, taking too many New Yorkers uh, too soon. Healthy NYC is our plan to increase life expectancy in this city to 83. Uh, years by 2030. We can't have a sick care system. We have to have a health care system that is more proactive and not reactive. Mm. We well, heard it there from Mayor Adams. Chronic disease, cancer, drugs, violence, just some of the factors leading to a shorter lifespan for New Yorkers. And now they're trying to turn it around with a new initiative to give people better access to mental health intervention, maternal health care, yep. more reliable transportation, and better food options. Just to name a few things that's on their plan list. So let's dig into this because it is concerning. I mean, you hear the numbers and you don't like the sound of it. Dr. Darian Sutton is here with us, um, ABC's doc and, and a friend of our show. Let's, good morning. So, you know, talking before the break, we all thought, is this kind of pandemic set up? Did things go so wrong during the pandemic that we haven't recovered? You know, that's a really great question. When you look at the average life expectancy prior to the onset of the pandemic, it was the highest at New York city has ever seen mm -hmm. about 82 years old during the pandemic we saw a drop of four years from wow. 82 to 78 wow. disproportionately we saw a bigger drop among black new yorkers mm. to 76 years old uh, the average life expectancy and so that is incredibly concerning those four to six years that magnitude is strong and severe. Now, why? I think a lot of it was associated to the pandemic, and I think, unfortunately, the pandemic exacerbated a lot of those underlying issues that were, were discussed by the mayor in terms of making this life expectancy drop so much. Opioid crisis. Opioid crisis. When drug use, depression. Drug use, depression, maternal mortality. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, during the pandemic, a lot of risk factors focused on age and those who were heavier. Those were those who, right. in the hospital, we saw had the highest risk of negative outcomes of COVID-19. Also, pregnant women. Those who were in their third trimester who had COVID-19 were at more risk for complications. Wow. And I, so when you look at all of those, as you were saying earlier before we started, it is probably, yes, tied into the pandemic. It seems like the pandemic is the common denominator. So even though we're past it somewhat, it seems yes. like we're past it. We're dealing with the residual effects. Mm. And you you said it right away. You already said it. The disparities here, mm. socioeconomic yes. and racial disparities mm, that yes. play a big role in life expectancy. And that involves something called social determinants of health. And in medicine, those are the things outside of medicine that affect our health. We talk about our community, our nutrition, our diet, um, air, water pollution, mm -hmm. how easy can we commute to work and that translates to how easy we can commute to our appointments to get our preventative screenings and cancer screenings. Well doctor we see the goal on the screen there and I feel like these things you know they happen so quickly but it's it's longer to reverse yes. so the goal you know double what maybe the people considered the pandemic to last you know we're talking about seven years or something away how challenging and how ambition, ambitious is this for the mayor to set out this plan and how, how achievable do you think it could be? I think it's I think it's very challenging and ambitious, but I do have a lot of hope. I'm generally an optimistic person, and yeah. I think that there are a lot of what we call low-hanging fruit inside those goals. Uh, when you talk about interventions and the things that we can do to save lives, a lot of that relies on prevention. Mm. Helping people get to their appointments, making sure they have access to their doctor, making sure they have access to nutritional food. Um, you know, these are all the things that within this city we can change and we can modify to help people live longer, not just living longer, also making them have a better quality of life as they get older. Well, you know what? New York City has already been a massive example for Absolutely. trying to improve health outcomes. Clean water. Yep. Yep clean air like we, we've made some some really really great strides yeah. um, and, and the world is watching us so at least we're making an attempt it's true it's so very needed yeah so, I, just just in your opinion because you actually see people who are treated all the time if if I'm sitting in my living room right now and I'm listening to this conversation and I don't have a lot of money to make a difference I can't maybe go to the best stores to choose the best food give me a little pocket thing of something I can do to kind of improve my life expectancy. Mm. That, I wish I could just give a, a simple answer. That is such uh. a great question. I rely on things that my mother always repeated of her, uh, a story. She would always say, you know, treat your body like a house you're going to live in for the next 80 years. Oh. And by that, it means invest in yourself. Uh, make sure that you get to those appointments. Make sure you value the importance mm. of what we put in our body. That's such great advice. And that I, is think, good. I think it's really important to think of it that way. And <laughs> in, in, in my age, I think of it that way in terms of, again, oh, I'm going to be living in this body until hopefully I'm 70, 80 as the patients that I see when they're coming in. And 
and sometimes I'm so inspired and I ask what do they do and I think that they give me their pocket, pocket advice which is I keep moving I eat right and I make sure to manage my stress as best as I can and I think that those are the three qualities that I've seen most beneficial to people as it's, they get older it's okay. good advice mama Sutton knew what she, she was does. doing <laughs> she does. she's going to love that she's going to really love that, really love that. <laughs> do you achieve that more than your twin brother I do, I do. I do. <laughs> again I'm telling you I'm winning at everything I know. <laughs> well, we certainly win when you make a house call over oh, here, so you. we appreciate it. Thank you, Doctor. So thank good. you. Thank you.